Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss how to tell if an interconnection of ideal independent sources is valid or not. For valid interconnections that have an exact solution, we will see how to verify the power check using passive sign convention. Recall that ideal independent sources do not exist in practice and they are circuit theory constructs only. An ideal voltage source is a circuit element that maintains a prescribed voltage V1 across its terminals regardless of the current flowing in those terminals. The word independent means that the voltage supplied by the ideal voltage source does not depend on any other quantity in the circuit. Similarly, an ideal current source is a circuit element that maintains a prescribed current I1 through its terminals, regardless of the voltage across those terminals. The term independent means that the current supplied by the ideal current source does not depend on any other quantity in the circuit. The current in an ideal independent voltage source can flow from positive to negative terminal or negative to positive terminal and can also be zero and this is all perfectly fine. Similarly, the voltage drop across an ideal independent current source can be any polarity and can even be zero and this is also perfectly fine for the ideal independent current source. Ideal independent sources can supply or absorb power depending upon the circuit conditions and this is also perfectly fine. Since ideal independent sources are circuit theory constructs, interconnections of such sources is also a circuit theory construct. Such interconnections allow us to practice applying Kirchhoff voltage law and Kirchhoff current law with passive sign convention. An interconnection is valid only if it satisfies both KCL and KVL. An interconnection, though valid, may lead to an indeterminate solution. Recall from basic maths that undefined means a solution does not exist. However, indeterminate means that there is no unique solution and in fact there may be infinitely many solutions. For interconnections that are valid and have an exact solution, we can apply power check to show that the sum of power supplied or generated in the circuit is equal to the sum of power absorbed in that circuit. For the first example, consider three simple interconnections of ideal independent voltage sources. For interconnection A, let's apply Kirchhoff voltage law to this single loop circuit using passive sign convention. We can start at any circuit element. Let's start here. We can see that going from minus to plus is a voltage rise. So it is written with a negative sign under passive sign convention. Next, we are going from plus to minus, which is a voltage drop. So that's written with a positive sign under passive sign convention. We can see that in this case, KVL is satisfied. For KCL, we can see that each voltage source is supplying the same voltage with the same polarity between nodes 1 and 2. Thus, they perfectly cancel each other and the current is zero and KCL is satisfied. Thus, we can conclude that interconnection A is valid and has an exact solution. 
For interconnection B, applying KVL, we can see that KVL is not satisfied. Thus, we can immediately conclude that interconnection B is invalid. Similarly, for interconnection C, applying Kirchhoff voltage law, we can see that the algebraic sum of voltages around the closed loop is minus 5 and is not equal to 0. Thus, we can immediately conclude that interconnection C is also invalid. Consider this next example involving ideal independent current sources. For interconnection A, applying Kirchhoff current law to node 1, we can see that the sum of currents entering is 5 amps and the sum of currents leaving is also 5 amps. Thus, KCL is satisfied. Applying KVL to this single loop circuit, we can see that the voltage drop across the two current sources must be the same. Thus, this interconnection A is valid but has an indeterminate solution. For interconnection B, applying KCL to node 1, we can see that KCL is in fact violated. Thus, we can immediately conclude that interconnection B is invalid. For interconnection C, this interconnection is valid and has an exact solution. The 10 volt voltage source and the 2 amp current source are connected in series in this single loop circuit. Thus, the 10 volts voltage source is carrying 2 amp current and KCL is satisfied. The 2 amp current source has a 10 volt voltage drop across it and KVL is also satisfied. Because an ideal independent voltage source <coughs> supplies the same voltage regardless of the current, and an ideal independent current source supplies the same current regardless of the voltage drop across it, this interconnection is valid. Consider the next example shown here. We have two ideal independent voltage sources connected in series with a current source. Thus the current through the 30 volt and the 20 volt sources is 8 amps, which is fine, and KCL is satisfied. For KVL, we can assume a polarity of the voltage across the current source as shown. Using passive sign convention, we can write the equation for this single loop circuit as follows. We can solve to show that the V1 is minus 10 volts and this voltage drop is fine for the ideal independent current source. Thus, this interconnection is valid and also has an exact solution. We can also verify that the power check is satisfied. For the 30 volt source, we write the power formula with a plus sign since the current is entering the terminal marked plus. For the 20 volt source, we write the power formula with a negative sign since the current is entering the terminal marked minus. For the 8 amp source, we write the power formula with a positive sign since the current is entering the terminal marked plus. Substituting the values, we can see that the 30 volt source is absorbing 240 watt power and the other two sources are generating power and in this circuit 
the total supplied power equals the total absorbed power. Thus, the power check is satisfied. Since this interconnection has an exact solution, we can also verify it using LTSPICE. When we run the simulation, we can see that the 30 volt source is dissipating or absorbing 240 watt power and the other two sources are generating power as calculated. Consider this fourth example, which is an interconnection of five ideal sources. Rather than exhaustively checking all loops and nodes in this circuit, we can use our knowledge and intuition from previous examples to make our task easier. The three amp current source, the 15 volt voltage source, and the two amp current source are connected in series. If we apply Kirchhoff current law to node one, we can see that KCL is being violated. Thus, this, in, this is an invalid interconnection. Finally, consider the last example. In this interconnection, the 6 volt source can carry the 1 amp current. The 10 volt source can carry the 2 amp current. The current sources can carry the voltage drops required by the interconnection. We can apply KCL to the top node shown here and easily show that KCL is satisfied. We can apply KVL to loops A and B to write the circuit equations as shown here. Next, we can rearrange them to solve for V3. Equating these two equations, we can show that V1 plus V2 is equal to minus 4 for this circuit. This means that any combination of V1 and V2 such that V1 plus V2 is equal to minus 4 volts is a valid solution for this interconnection. Thus, this is a valid interconnection with an indeterminate solution. Please pause the video now if you wish to study the solution in more detail. In summary, in this video, we have looked at interconnections of ideal independent sources. We have seen that such interconnections, which are a circuit theory construct only, can lead to an indeterminate solution. When an exact solution exists, then we can also show that the power check is satisfied and also we can simulate the circuit using LTSPICE. Thank you for watching the video.